Hi, my name is Austin. I am a voice and audio designer currently working in the gaming industry. In this video, I am remaking one of my favorite voice effects. That is the voice of Pike from League of Legends. My goal when designing this voice was not to make a one-to-one -one copy, but rather to take the same timbre and emotion and replicate the essence of it. Here's what Pike sounds like. Not for the storm that's brewing. Captains always favor the ship over the crew. So that's some sample of what Pike himself sounds like, and my final result sounded like this. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. Heard a lot of last words. Forgot them all. So that was my rough draft, and now let's take a look at the effects and see how I got there. This track here is my stem track. The actual audio clips sit here, and the only processing on the effects for that track is the EQ, compression, and de-essing. The stem does not output to the master, rather it's routed to these two tracks here, which are where the stylized effects are, and then these two tracks route to the master, which then routes to the output, and has a send to the reverb. One of the keys is not just the effects, but also the voice itself. So let's listen to a line without any effects on. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. Heard a lot of last words. Forgot them all. The first time I messed around with my effects chains, I was using a different voice line from a different character, and it didn't sound, it didn't sound good at all. But when applying the exact same effects chain to this voice, it very much gives the vibe that I was looking for. One of the first things I do when designing a voice is to sweep around with a pitch shifter until I find a vocal register that really resonates for that character. Normally, I'm trying not to pitch shift so far that it doesn't sound like the original actor anymore. I want to maintain their tone and intonation whenever possible. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. I think that adds some monstrosity to his voice while still keeping all of his actual acting intact. Next, I add some tape saturation just to these middle frequencies here. And I also am adding a filter with a slight dip in the low end and a mid-range boost. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. And the last touch for this is a very minor high shelf boost to add a little bit more sparkle to the voice. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. The voice at this point to me is sounding very thin. I wanted to do as little heavy effects processing as possible to the main part of the voice where the intelligibility is and put most of the crazy effects on the low end. Normally, I add different pitch changes to each copy of the voice signal, but in this circumstance, it made the end result sound a little too hectic and muddy for me. The end result already sounds just a little bit on the muddy side, in my opinion, but when the pitches were different, it sounded even more so. So this sounds the same as the first time that we pitched the voice down. Pretty face. And the first effect I add after that is a tremolo. Pretty face. Shame if someone I'm going to take this tremolo back off for a minute so that we can clearly hear the next three effects. In a forum post, the original sound designer for Pike said that he wanted Pike's voice to sound as if his vocal cords were like torn up and, and shredded. And I'm trying to get to that effect by having the tremolo, which I've now taken off, plus some distortion. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. That sounds a little bit extreme, but I think it works fine once we run it through a band pass. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. I added a delay with equal parts dry and wet, and the delay time is around 40 milliseconds, which is on the upper end of where a delay can sound like a really cool vocal doubler. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. Now let's add back in that tremolo. And now let's blend the voices together. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. All my intelligibility is on this first track. That's not too messed up. 
and then the heavy modulation effects are all on the bass track. So both of these tracks route to the master, where I have some light compression to glue them together, and some multiband compression to mellow out the low end and glue the mids a little bit better. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. And lastly, we have the reverb line. First, I have a relatively normal sounding reverb with a two second decay time. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. Next, we have a ping pong delay with a very slight phasing effect. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. And lastly, I actually added a tremolo to the reverb line itself. If we compare it to the tremolo on the bass voice, there's two major differences here. One of them is the depth is a lot lower than on the bass because I wanted the reverb to still sound like a space. And when the depth was up too high, it lost that element. The other major difference is the frequency at which the tremolo is acting. My thought process behind this was that maybe I could achieve a similar timbre to FM synthesis, where in FM, two oscillators can beat against each other when they have slightly different LFOs. And this doesn't exactly sound like that effect, but I think it's pretty cool. Pretty face. Shame if someone stuck a harpoon in it. Heard a lot of last words. Forgot them all. And I actually just want to play the delay by itself real quick. Pretty face. Shame. 